All right, guys, here we have a 2001 Club Car DS Gas. This one here is having a charging system issue. A customer is saying that the cart, they can drive it for probably an hour, and then when they go to start it again after it stops, it won't start. It just makes a rapid clicking sound, uh, which tells me the battery's going dead. So I'll show you what I do to diagnose the charging system. It's actually quite simple. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, neutral, we're gonna put our mode here into service mode. Take our connections from our meter, hook them up to the battery. See, we are at 14, almost 13 and a half volts. So now we'll run it, see what it does. If the charging system is not working like it should, we're gonna see our voltmeter drop around 12 volts and kind of hover there. If it is working like it's supposed to, it'll hover a little bit past 14 volts, almost 15 volts on this meter. If it has failed, but is still charging, it's gonna exceed 16 volts and we still have to change the voltage regulator. As you can see, it didn't even, it didn't raise, it's kind of dropped a bit and it's now it's floating back up to about 13 volts. I noticed also the governor's not working on this cart, so there's a, that's another issue for another day, I guess. So I guess what we'll do now is we're gonna pop the control box cover off and we'll take a look in there and we'll take some measurements. Is there a screw? Oh, there is no screw. I didn't even see it. Okay, so we'll take the control box cover off. The other thing you can do too is remove this air hose. It'll give you better access. Normally I wouldn't, bother to remove this unless it gets in my way and pisses me off but for the sake of the video so you guys could actually see what the heck I'm doing in here we'll take it off you probably noticed that the lighting's a lot better I'm actually using a four foot shop light hanging from the golf cart's top in order to give myself and the camera more light so what I'm doing now is I'm just cutting off these zip ties so I can lift these wires out of here a little bit easier. Just makes it that much easier. So now here's the yellow wire and then we have two ground wires in here. There's one that goes to the ground switch on the micro switch here and then the other half of that ground wire goes to the chassis. And then the red wire comes off the solenoid, which is the starter generator side of the solenoid. All right, so in order to basically test to see if the starter generator is in fact, putting out the proper voltage, there is the, the yellow wire on the smallest stud on the starter generator itself, which here I'm gonna use a wire that I have two alligator clips on. And we go basically right to ground with that. You could also do this from the yellow wire in the control box as well, if you don't wanna go through the trouble of trying to find the, the cable underneath this cover here but I mean if you can see the starter generator you can see the yellow wire that's attached to it that's going to be the charge circuit from the starter generator to the voltage regulator so now that we've done that we're going to take our meter here we're going to go positive on this side and then I'm actually going to go negative here with the meter and then I'm going to take the negative or the clamp from this and we'll hook it up as we're running the engine so that way I can keep the wire off the muffler here. So right now we're sitting at about 13 volts. So when I'm going to run the engine and I'm going to touch this wire to ground, which is basically going to go to the chassis or to the negative terminal on the battery. And this should initiate a charge. But what we have to watch for now is the meter to go up. If it goes up and continues climbing 
up over 15 volts and over to 16 volts and beyond, we know that the starter generator is then putting out the power required in order to charge the battery. And that'll tell us that the voltage regulator has failed. If it doesn't move, then we know the charging output on the starter generator has failed. So let's get the engine running. So even throughout that RPM range, we have no voltage output. So this tells me that the charging circuit has failed. We know that we have a bad starter generator, so we have to replace it. Our voltage regulator may be just fine, but we won't be able to test it until we put a starter generator in it. All right, so we got a starter generator for this. So now what I gotta do is start disconnecting all the cables. The new starter generator comes with all the nuts to anchor the wires to it, so we don't have to save the hardware off the old one. We just need to get it disconnected from the electrical. Loosen it up, take the bolts out and swap it out and put the new one in and we're ready to go. Now the mounting hardware for the starter generator, like the adjustment locking bolts and the pivot bolts, we do have to save those since we will need them to reinstall the new one. is the old one and the brushes in the old one are still good there's still lots of life left on them i don't know if you're gonna be able to see that in there but it is original equipment looks like it has seen better days on the admiral motor series admiral motors electric motors for electric or motors for electric carts and starter generators are all they're not a rebranded electric motor they are built specifically for our needs. Now, this part number here is MOT 2005. Let me double check. Yes. MOT 2005 will work on the club car precedent and DS, and it can work in clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. So this one does not come with the link wire, which we will have to remove from here. So we need to go to A2, I'm sorry, F1 to A1 for proper rotation. Okay, so we don't need that. and we'll install it onto A1. So basically directly replacing exactly what was here. Now what I'll do to get the tension on the belt is I will stick a screwdriver between the starter generator bracket and the starter generator to get it somewhat tight. And then I'll get the nuts and bolts snug, but not too tight where I can still adjust it. And then I'll put a breaker bar in there or a crowbar between the bracket and the starter generator to get the correct tightness. You never want to put a bar between the exhaust and the starter generator because you could end up crushing the pipe or breaking it. as close as possible but like I said first I want to get these bolts a little bit tighter this will just make it much easier to keep the alignment where it needs to be Thank you. 
put some weight on that to make it tight. It may need to be adjusted over time. Okay. All right, so that's adjusted now. Belt's good. Now we can make all of our electrical connections. Or I should say the rest of our electrical connections. So since I ripped that glove and that glove, I don't really need them now. I could probably. And then I like to hold on to the battery or the cables that are on the starter generator to prevent them from spinning while I tighten down the, the nut. And remember, don't go too tight because you end up stripping these out and then you're you're stuck. Because if you over tighten them and you strip them out, that's not warranty. Okay, so our starter generator is installed. Now we can run the engine and do a voltage test. Put the key in. We're going to put it into service mode. See if this has fixed our problem. Looks like we still have a bad voltage regulator, so we will end up having to change it anyway. Okay, DC volts. And now we'll see if our voltage climbs. Yes. Okay, so our starter generator was the problem, and we also have a bad voltage regulator. Our voltage was climbing from 13.4 volts. We hooked up the yellow wire from the starter generator's charging output circuit directly to ground with the voltmeter, and I watched the voltage climb up to 17 volts very quickly, so I know the starter generator is now charging like it should, but now we have to put the voltage regulator on so it controls the voltage and we don't blow up our battery. So now we have to put a voltage regulator in it like I originally thought. So unfortunately, sometimes, it's not just one item that fails. It does take, sometimes it does take two of them to fail. Okay, so I take the air hose off so we can see a little bit better in here. Hopefully you can see this. This is the switched drive circuit to the solid, or the starter generator. So we're gonna remove this. Gotta take the positive wire off of the voltage regulator. Have to lift out the voltage regulator right here and then unplug it from the micro switch and then it goes directly to ground from that point so now while i have that all disconnected we're going to hook up the new one which we have our positive connection here I don't understand why I left this at the bottom, but hey, go in. This way, this is one of the easier connections. Okay. And then we'll take our... So we have a ground wire here. I think I might just cut that and splice it. And we have our ground... Our, our connection from our starter generator. I have to make that a little tighter. I don't like how that feels. The bullet connector was a little loose for my liking. That's better. Okay. And then we have the negative wire that goes to our micro switch, and the other one goes to chassis ground. This voltage regulator is actually larger in diameter, or physically larger than the one we pulled out. So we won't be able to bolt it in, but I am gonna leave the screw in here. So I know that it's in there. I'll plug in our, see, that, now this one here, I'll just cut that wire off because I'm not gonna be farting around with that too much. And where this ring terminal is that would go to 
the frame. We're going to cut this off and we'll put a splice connector on there so it makes it easier to service this again in the future. Because this is a consumable part, you know, it's something that will fail again at some point. They all do. Just the way it is, I suppose. You know, if they grounded it to like something that was a little bit easier to get to, it probably wouldn't be so bad. Plug in our switched ground, which basically this uh, this just sends the signal to ground to shut the ignition system down. It's like I said, it's so much easier to make this a serviceable piece as opposed to trying to fight with it and unhook all these wires that are here. I'd rather it be a simple plug-on-plug -plug system. Now I know you're probably thinking, well, what about the other connection in there that already has a bullet connector on it? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I'm going to make it so that the only thing they can plug in to this one will be nothing. It'll have the opposite connection in compared to the one that comes off the starter generator. go plug that in we'll feed that back down in, in place here put this wire back down in place now before I put the cover on which well it doesn't really matter because it's it just doesn't matter okay so I'm gonna bridge this bridge that there we go so I have 13.17 volts <laughs> Point three volts right on the money so that is charging exactly how it should 14 and a half to 15.3 volts is roughly about where you want it to be so that's good that's that's a result that is the result we need so now I will oops, put this air box or this air intake hose back on There's no, uh, there's no screw for the control box cover. The guy never put one on or didn't have one or didn't have one when he got it. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So we'll get this one all buttoned up. I'll put the access panel cover back on, and then this cart will be complete. And then I'll give a, get in touch with the customer, let them know that we are done. So, all right, guys, I want to thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Be sure to check out the video's description to links to products I use every single day to bring you these videos and to run my business. Be sure to check out the links to my website and social media pages. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications anytime I upload a video to the channel. And as always, thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.